now. And okay. I, good evening. Welcome to the March 24th, 2020 monthly meeting of the Independent Citizen Police Review Board in the city of Pittsburgh. If you are viewing this uh, live stream on Facebook or you are here as an attendee through Zoom, please use your dashboard functions if you wish to send a message, ask a question, or give a thumbs up. Uh, we will then present your questions and comments to the board at the end of their meeting. We hope you are all staying safe and well. And Dr. Lucas Darby will now convene the meeting. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pittinger. Um, I too want to say that uh, given the conditions that we have to adhere to, please stay safe, observe all of the cautionary measures, and hopefully we will be out of this in maybe, I hope, a month. We don't know, but I certainly hope so. So thank you everyone for being with us uh, this evening. And according to my participants list, we have a quorum. Um, the individuals of the uh, committee of the uh, board who are not here, uh, but we hope will join us are Dr. Gershio, Mr. Green, and Mr. Williams. So um, when they uh, join, uh, we'll just include them in the discussion. Uh, I call the meeting to order. And uh, at this time, I would like to have, um, um, if the, you all have reviewed the minutes that were sent to you, I would like to have a motion to approve the minutes. So move. A second. It has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries. The minutes will be filed. Uh, at this time, I, uh, the only comment I want to make is to thank the, um, the complete office staff for all they're doing to keep us informed uh, and to keep the various um, responsibilities that they have moving forward. It's not easy, but at the same time, we know that life doesn't stop and they are continuing with their work. And we really appreciate them for that. And thank um, Ms. Pittinger and the staff for making sure that we could get the Zoom so that we can have our monthly meeting. Okay, with that being said, Ms. Pittinger, we'll move down to your report. Thank you, Dr. Darby. Um, we had kind of an abbreviated work month since last we met, but I did have an opportunity to join in an academic symposium that was sponsored by the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement at the University of Texas on March the 6th and the 7th. It was, it was a great event. It's, uh, I think, the first academic symposium that the association has sponsored. It was a great event. It really was very informative, a lot of experts. Um, reinforcing to see how many people in academia are studying, um, scientifically studying, the kinds of trends and the indices that tell us what's really happening in the police community relationship. Um, I hope they do it again, and I hope that I could participate again. On Saturday, I had an opportunity to share our experiences with colleagues at an executive leadership forum, and that too was very, um, very interesting. We have a very diverse group of oversight professionals, um, police and prisons and jails, a very interesting group of folks um, with some pretty significant challenges uh, to work within the systems that deal with the criminal justice uh, culture. Uh, on uh, March the 16th, uh, your office went remote. Um, that was a result of some, you know, concerns about the COVID-19. Um, we do have some public interaction, you know, in and out of the office, but our investigators are often meeting with people and we felt that at that time, it was appropriate to back off our person to person contacts until we knew more and then of course the rest is history. We are now under a stay at home order um, and so we'll stay at home, but the investigators are conducting research. 
they're making phone calls, they're doing what they can do to continue to pursue the investigations that were open without having any personal contact with anybody. Um, Michelle has been handling the intake. Uh, the phone is forwarded to her phone and um, email and um, referrals from OMI come in electronically, of course. So she's able to process them. So when we go back in, they had been going in last week, um, almost daily, somebody was going in to check on the office for the mail, et cetera. But we've, we've stayed away since. Um, and I think we'll do so until the stay at home order is lifted. But electronically, what Michelle can manage and catalog, she's doing. So when we do go back, it'll be an easy, um, you know, pick it up where we left off experience for everyone, including our, um, our clients and, and the police that we've been trying to reach or that we're awaiting um, officer statements from. And I think that Mr. Ward has done a phenomenal job in, in negotiating and facilitating a resolution to our stalemate. I don't know, Bill, if you'd like to update the board. Well, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Uh, we discussed a potential strategy about uh, continuing negotiations as opposed to marching into court with a motion to seek enforcement of the subpoena. Uh, it's not fully baked yet, but I'm confident in saying that uh, that strategy has worked, that I had a very productive discussion with the uh, city solicitor's office, and that uh, the arguments that I presented were well received and should result in uh, the production of the documents that we requested via subpoena shortly after we returned to work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Sure. I'm sorry, Dr. Darby, did I interrupt you? No, 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 I was just saying I'm glad to hear that, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the history that we had, it seems that the institutional memory is, is what was deficient. Mm -hmm. um, in that there was a court order that was was there and had been the basis for us, you know, moving forward for many, many years. And I think once it was fully understood that this isn't something that they're doing as a courtesy, it's something that ended up being required by the court, that they've examined their practices. And I think we're going to be okay there. I don't find any particular direct animus towards, you know, our office or anything. And I will give OMI credit that they are very busy. They have they have a lot on their plate. And I'm sure it would have been attractive if they could eliminate some of what they have to do um, to support us. But we have to remind them that it's not so much they're supporting us, it's that we are doing our job and they are a source of information. So we appreciate all the work that Mr. Ward did on that. Uh, at our last meeting, I invited and told you all that um, the County Council in their um, endeavor to create some countywide oversight um, had scheduled a meeting for uh, March the 18th. And they had uh, invited us to come and present um, to the County Public Safety Committee that is chaired by Councilwoman Bennett um, some ideas and share your experience as a board and, and the kinds of things that we've learned in the last 21 years that uh, would be you know, constructive and I, I think informative for them. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, that meeting has been canceled and it's to be determined at this point. But when we do have an update on that, I will let you know and hopefully some of you can join us at that meeting. I have, um, I have completed my report, Dr. Darby. Okay, thank you very much. Um, do let us know when that meeting is rescheduled because uh, Ms. Bennett and I see each other quite often and I want her to know we're still backing up everything I've told her in terms of sharing information. So uh, let us know. When I'm inclined to, to focus on, on the value of, of perhaps an ombudsman office mm. that would enable not only a troubleshooter, someone who could intervene with you know multiple municipalities more as a facilitator to resolve questions than be um, an investigative body like you are mm. um, because again I mean I I'm not budging from this your model does not apply to 105 police departments sure. that you have control over only one yeah. that said um, 
it could also be it could also be developed as a, um, that resource center that we've encouraged mm -hmm. consideration of. Um, it would be a good place for a clearinghouse such as that to be. And it would, I think, perhaps be a, the most valuable model mm -hmm. while still giving the, um, the citizenry an opportunity to, to be heard. Thank well, you. when you discussed that with her originally, what was her reaction? Uh, well, she's very open to all, all ideas. You okay. Remember, they had the situation where the ordinance, the original ordinance went down. It was voted right. down. Right. And the numerous problems that were contained in that language and fundamentally the due process problem. You, you just cannot yeah. do something like this and not include the due process protections. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That part of it, I think everybody recognized um, Mr. Green is calling in. Um, I think they recognized that that, that was a, a major flaw, as oh. well as procedurally, um, the things that went along with the deficiency in the due process, like having a hearing. No, they mm -hmm. were just going to allow people to come in and say whatever about a, an, is, an incident. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> there, there was comment that, well, that's not the place for evidence or testimony. Well, right. Yeah, it is. It's the only mm -hmm. time you're going to be able to establish facts and so on and so forth. But yeah. overall, that's why the model itself is not appropriate for the challenge. Mm -hmm. And so um, Councilwoman Bennett is the chairperson of the Public Safety Subcommittee for Allegheny County Council, and she's open to all suggestions. Good. And they're intending to speak to uh, numerous parties um, and, and put it all together and come up with an alternative to the original plan. Good. I want to thank you, Beth, because when I first interacted with her, it wasn't such an openness, but I'm really happy that you followed up and you've um, showed her that we are here, we're willing to be supportive, and it's not that we're uh, non-believers in what they can do, but we just want to give them accurate information. So I really appreciate you. Uh, and all you. the interactions you've had with her. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay, any questions for Ms. Pittinger? Uh, no. None? Okay. We will move down to, uh, is there any unfinished business? I don't think so. In a new business? Okay, we're moving along, folks. <laughs> All right, so we'll um, consider the case reviews at this point. All right. Um, we have no public hearings and we have three full investigations. I would like to take these, um, it, well, first of all, does anyone have any questions about any of the cases on the full investigation? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I uh, just have one thing we may want to pay attention to. I'm not sure if, if Sheldon is in the room as a panelist, and because if his camera's not working, um, I'm not sure if you, when you call for a vote, if we will hear him or not. Oh, okay. So I just want to make sure that uh, we capture, we have an ability to make sure that we have all the votes captured. Okay, he's, he's, he's not listed yet. Uh, Beth, do you have his status? Here he is. Oh, okay, good. Got it, got it, great. He's Thank in, you. he's in now, great. Mr. Williams? He's uh, on the attendee list. Yeah, he's on the attendee Move. list. He was promoted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his mic is muted. I should be I wonder if he's now. trying to respond to us. I it said unmuted. I unmuted it. You unmuted it. Good, good. All right. All right. And, thank you. And, and I um, have I have grandkids. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so I'll be muted until I got a vote. Okay. Say okay, hi. that's fine. No problem at all. Thank you all for right. joining us. All right. Mr. Okay. Williams, we have you here twice. I must I'm not sure why, because uh I don't know why. And I use Zoom all the time. Well, we'll leave it alone so we don't 
um, erroneously discard one of you, which is the active one. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a question about one case, so I would like to take these uh, individually. Uh, so the first case is 6120, and that is for full investigation. May I have a motion to accept that case for full investigation? I'll accept it for full. I'll make a motion. I'll okay. Second. second. It has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? You have your question first? Are, they, are there any questions? Okay. I'm sorry. I thought this is the one you had a question on. I'm, no, 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 no. This isn't the one. Okay. This okay. I, I apologize. Okay. So the eyes have it. The motion carries. Okay. Now 4920. Uh, may I have a motion to accept it for full investigation? So move. Second. A second. It has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 The ayes have it, the motion carries. I have a question about uh, 0320, and this is the one where the individual, the police were involved and the individual passed away, and there were questions about um, the actions of the police officer. Beth, I just need a clarification on, is that the usual action of an officer, or is, is that when EMS is generally involved? I believe Mr. Elwood is the investigator. Are you here, Dave? Yes, I am. Um, and that, honestly, uh, Madam Chair, is what I am beginning to look into. Okay. Um, I have reached out to the detective that was listed on the case, um, and uh, they have declined to uh, make a comment right now because it is a pending uh, criminal investigation. Um, uh, as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to reach out to uh, EMS and see if I can get a policy from them de uh, dealing with when and how that mm -hmm. kind of decision is made, but I haven't heard back, um, and I also haven't heard back from the Bureau, but currently there is no written policy uh, for the Bureau on anything like that because that's such an outside-of-the-norm situation. Right. The other question, and this is because I don't know what protocol is for the police in a case like this. Now, the witness says the individual was already dead, correct? Correct. And the mother said that the the, the individual was not. Not, right. Which is something that's still to be determined because I have made um, uh, three phone calls to the complainant to find out the details of the situation and have not been able to reach them yet. Okay, all right. So we'll get more information probably as this moves along then. Absolutely, I will not let go of it. Okay, uh, with that being clarified, uh, we need a motion to accept this case for full investigation. So uh, moved. And second? A second. second. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we have nine for 30 day extensions. Are there any questions about any of these cases? Uh, if not, we can take them as a whole. No questions? Okay, the nine uh, cases for full, I mean, 30 day uh, extension are 620, 520, 251-19, 243-19, 242-19, 238-19, 233-19, 213-19, 217-19. May I have a motion to accept these for 30-day extension? So moved. Second? I'll, I'll second. Okay, thank you. It's, it has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries. Okay, we have one that is unsustainable because the evidence does not support the allegations 
And that is case 143.19. May I please have a motion to accept it as unsustainable? So move. A second. It has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. I have a, I have a you oh, have a sorry. question? Sorry. Okay. I, yeah, it's not so much a question. I agree with the recommendation. I just found this case a little alarming. And I hope that in the settling of it through our vote, there will be dialogue back to the complainant mm -hmm. so that they truly understand what, ha what why, um, and how their actions in this case were seen as different from mm -hmm. their previous. And in such a big way, what we're all about is the community police relationship. And the police need the community as much as the community needs the police. And here are some community members that I want to make sure truly understand how they can be most helpful and when their actions start to cross a line and not be helpful. Okay, sure. Ms. Penninger, um, can Mr. Elwood communicate more with this complainant? Um, I believe that is Sherry's case. And oh, Sherry is it? Is here, and she can speak to that. Which, we have which Elwood case? on my sheet. This is case number 252. No, 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 one, four, three, nineteen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. I apologize. Okay. The Who page before. One? Yes. Um, that's Mr. Elwood. Uh, my apologies. Dave. Dave, can you speak to that? Uh, yes. I was, just wasn't sure if I was on yet. Um, Yes, that is, I have spoken with the complainant already, and I did inform her of the very fine line. Um, that there was a, there was a very very clear distinction between providing information and investigative activities, mm -hmm. um, and um, the complainant understands that um, and will act accordingly. Um, it, 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 she, she accepts it. Okay. So, so she understands that there are expectations in terms of a call like this. And That's what correct. And I also explained very specifically the, uh, the case law and um, right. gave her access to that case law. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Is that it, Thomas? Yep. Okay. Thanks. All right, now we'll move to one, uh, I'm sorry, 252.19. And this is unfounded because the evidence does not support the allegations. So may I have a motion to um, dismiss this case? So move. Second. I'll second. It has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries. Sheldon, I think your grandchildren are voting too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't know what they're voting for, but <laughs> they're speaking their mind. <laughs> yeah, the little chirping is there. That's okay. My apologies. No, no, no. That's fine. No problem. No problem at all. Okay, we have uh, seven suspensions. Uh, they are case 206-19, 199-19, 190-19, 199-21, Nineteen, and this was um, submitted by the ED. One forty-eight, nineteen, sixty, nineteen, and one hundred two, nineteen. So, may I have a motion to extend these until? Well, it won't be the March meeting; it will be the April meeting. Even though the one say March, it will be the April meeting. You see that one, Beth? Yes. Uh, my list says April meeting. For 102.19? For that whole list. Oh, really? Yeah, I must oh. have an, okay, a, my. a newer just, list. Just one saves March. Uh, 102.19 saves March, and it should be April. Okay, yeah. the very last one. Yes, the very last one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have uh, seven for suspensions until the April meeting. May I have a motion to that effect? 
So move. Second. A second. It has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries. Okay, we have two others that were withdrawn and they are 192.19 and 266.19. Uh, so may I have a motion to withdraw those two cases? So move. Second. Second. Have, okay, this moved and properly seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries. And uh, as you know, each month now we get the suspensions that are currently uh, being uh, on the docket for us. And um, how many do we have? One, two, three. We have six, correct, Beth? Yeah. Six, six suspensions. Um, and we have the update on uh, the status of each of those cases. So uh, they'll just be entered into the record with the updated status for those. Okay. All right, are there any questions about any of the cases we have reviewed this evening? No. Okay, we finished the um, bulk of the agenda for this evening. Madam Chair? Yes. We did have one question from a member of the audience Okay. Um, requesting clarification on Mr. Ward's report about um, the subpoena enforcement. And uh, that had to do with what exactly did that mean with the discussion with the solicitor's office? Let me try to get it back here to ask you. Uh, I, I, I'm losing it. I'm sorry. It keeps going away. Um, okay. But I believe that was the question. We'll try again here. Yeah. It's not... the, the question reads, what was Mr. There. Ward referring to when talking about enforcement of the subpoena and productive discussion with the solicitor's office? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ward? Do you want to do or should I jump in? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, this pertains to a long-standing agreement between the city, OMI, and the board with respect to the production of, of information and particularly officer statements. Um, we had requested certain uh, statements and documents from OMI and they had uh, initially refused. Um, we were discussing, discussing with uh, the city solicitor's office the prospect of going into the Court of Common Pleas with a motion to enforce the settlement agreement that had been established close to 15 years ago, if not longer, uh, which settlement had been approved by the court. So it was a court approved settlement. Uh, as Ms. Pittenger observed, uh, my discussions with uh, both OMI initially and with the city solicitor's office later reminded them of the fact of the longstanding uh, agreement of cooperation between the board and OMI, as well as the fact that a previous settlement agreement had been approved by the court. And as such, it would be a fairly um, pointless exercise by the city to continue to resist the production of those documents and statements. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there another question? Uh, yes, the question was, was that in relation to a specific case? And the answer is yes. Okay. Anything else uh, come again, Beth? Uh, we have nothing else for you from the staff view. Uh, I don't know. We do have some visitors. I don't know if anyone wishes to offer a comment. Tris, are you interested in saying anything? No. She looks muted. That's not nice. So she may, <laughs> I, I don't know whether she may or may not, but she looks muted right now. 
Uh, she is. I can't unmute it, so it may be on her side. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the follow-up question to the previous one was what case? Uh, I mean, are we at liberty to reveal that? There are numerous cases. Okay. Through the court order, we were entitled uh, by right to certain documents. And it, it, it was initiated, this current um, dispute or you know, misunderstanding came about in the fall when we were seeking additional documents related to the bar brawl. Mm -hmm. But it affected all of our cases that were open investigations where we are entitled to certain documents that they were not turning over. Okay. And so it, it, it applies to all of them, but that's what initiated this most current circumstance. Okay. All right. Okay, are there, uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Hang on one second. Okay. Um, the Ozarks are in the chat room and oh, they are. They said they have no camera or microphone. I'm asking them now if they had any questions or statements. Okay. I wonder if they're if they're on their phone. Okay. Uh, no, but thanks for the invitation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, are there any announcements? No announcements? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, perhaps it would be a good opportunity to just um, reassure everyone who may be interested or watching this that the office is still processing complaints. Um, we can be reached through our office phone number, 412-765-8023. Um, if someone has a question, concern, or a complaint, we can, they can call that number. They can also email us at cprb at pittsburghpa.gov or cprbpgh at cprbpgh.org. We will, we will not be in the office until the stay at home order is lifted and everybody goes back to work, but we are certainly accessible. All right, I wanna thank everyone in the chat room that joined us uh, this evening. Uh, and certainly the uh, board thanks you for being uh, so diligent in sticking with us through all of this. And I believe our next meeting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Our next meeting will be April 28th, correct Beth? Yes. Okay. And um, is that one for council chambers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. We were scheduled to be at Freedom Unlimited this month, but right. It, yeah. So next month we'll be in city council chambers. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other comments from any board members? All right, may I have a motion to adjourn our first Zoom meeting? <laughs> so Second. You all want to adjourn or not? <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you want? I'll okay. Second. Well, thank everyone, and we'll stay connected. Uh, you know, via email, and if we have to in another month via Zoom again. So. Uh, stay safe, and um, we hope everyone um, is doing what they need to do to be uh, sanitized and to keep their social distance uh, as well. So thanks again, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thank you.